Hello and welcome to uh, Splashing Around with Installatron Apps Session 2, Scalar. Um, we're very excited to bring this to you today. I'm joined by Pilot to kind of, hey, how's it going? Good. Awesome. Yeah. I totally interrupted you. No. To How ahead. excited are you to dive into, not dive, splash around? Yes. <laughs> um, very excited. Uh, honestly, I don't, I, I've looked at Scalar once or twice um, when I was Domain of One's own admin. I had someone go, so would Scalar be good for this project? Like, what would you recommend? And I went, no idea. Let me go take a look. And I did not get very far, but also they didn't seem particularly interested in pursuing that project. So it didn't end up mattering. Right. Um, but I'm excited to revisit it because I think, yeah, I, I want to understand it much better than I did. I want to sort of see how to get started, that sort of thing. For sure. And um, I think that we have definitely seen a massive uptick in interest in Scalar. Mm -hmm. um, I know that we've been getting a lot of interest in it in the support queue. Uh, people who have existing projects, it's not like it's brand new. There are some people who have existing projects who are, you know, working on updating things or um, man managing it long term and want to know some tips and tricks. And while this is certainly, um, you know, the theme of this whole Flex course is let's talk about things that aren't WordPress. <laughs> um, we did start out with Omeka and Omeka S last week. Uh, Meredith and I spoke about that. And so um, now we're moving into th that. That is still pretty comfortable territory for us. But now we're moving into territory that is certainly um, less well known with us. Mm -hmm. um, Scalar is something that we have an installatron <laughs> and we know of people who use it but that's pretty much where our expertise is limited so for me this has been exciting to be able to flash around have this opportunity to kind of play around with scalar because um i know that we're all interested in knowing a little bit more about it we're seeing a lot of potential for it and we're seeing people do really cool things with it so i'm excited yeah to get into it we're waiting we're continuing the water metaphor we're waiting a little bit further out <laughs> than omeka omeka s i love it we're just going to continue coming up with strange water non-committal water <laughs> okay. all right so let's let's get into it yeah i've got some slides here um again just okay, always so trying to be like my idol Meredith. So um, <laughs> Meredith has the best slides. Always Meredith has the best slides. I'm not even going to pretend that these are even equal, but th these are the slides. So they're going to help. Stylish. I like them. <laughs> well, thank you. So um, we're talking about Scalar today. Um, and so the main thing that we are going to focus on is today's topics, obviously. And so we're going to touch a bit on these, these themes here. What is Scalar? We're gonna actually, instead of getting right into Scalar, we're gonna take a, a pause and check out like an example Scalar site that we are aware of that is really cool um, to kind of whet your interest and guide us through the rest of these more um, technically oriented uh, bits about Scalar, including installing and using it and handling redirects. And then we'll also have some resources and whatnot at the end for you. So what is Scalar? Scalar is supported by the Alliance for Network uh, Networking Visual Culture, or ANVC. Um, it is an open source authoring uh, and publishing platform, specifically using their words for digital born scholarship. And I love this idea because um, this is something that makes Scalar particularly unique. It is fully embracing the fact that it is a digital platform. It's not something necessarily for um, that is geared toward taking print kind of static mm -hmm. uh, publications 
and just plopping them online the way that some other platforms might, which is still fully valuable and very much appropriate for certain projects. Um, and it's still kind of possible with Scalar, but doing so would kind of be missing out on a lot of the potential that this platform has for your project. Um, trying to sort of make use of the flexibility of how you can organize your projects in a way that sort of that linear print. Yeah. It, it's harder to do that with print um, mm -hmm. in certain ways. Fully, and it 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 the your point about this you know nonlinear content creation, which is another big point of what Scalar is, um, is really what makes it a um, an experiment in thought and process. Right, it helps us think about resources, publication resources, and educational resources in that nonlinear way, and kind of makes the focus more on uh, the dynamics of learning about and interacting with a publication. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about nonlinear content creation, what does that mean? Um, <laughs> so linear being, you know, page after page, chapter after chapter, um, and that kind of traditional way that we're used to interacting with publications. Uh, whereas in Scalar, that is an option, and that is considered, uh, they, they refer to that type of formatting as a path. So um, they have their content kind of split into, their content format split into paths and tags. Paths is something that is more linear, and tags are considered nonlinear groupings of content. So this would include things like indexes, descriptors, and so on. Um, the benefit of using nonlinear content in a scalar, the scalar platform is that it allows you to create visualizations that show users the content and connections that are happening all within a project. Ooh. Yeah. So you can just read through a project or you can go in and just start making connections that maybe otherwise you would have to scrape an entire project, plug it into a whole completely different software program, um, and then start running some visualizations. You can do that all within Scalar if you um, have things set up properly. Cool. Um, yeah. And it, so it's a really dynamic way of interacting with that material. Um, and there is, it also has uh, its own API and it is very good at um, interacting with other APIs. And so it's also very popularly used for um, adding like the Google Maps API and that type of thing, um, nice. which you can do easily from cPanel file manager and that kind of thing. So yeah. So the site example that we're going to start with is um, blackquotidian.org. Uh, we love this example here at Reclaim. Um, it is based out of the Stanford U University Press. And what it is, is I actually had to look up the word quotidian because I didn't really know what that meant. Um, but it basically means daily. So like the daily type newspaper, right? And so the everyday mm -hmm. history in African-American newspapers, um, you know, throughout history. And um, it's a great example of a single scalar book being used for an entire scalar project. So as we're going to explore as we go along here, scalar is really built for having multiple books on one platform. Like on mm -hmm. one instance of scalar, you'll have multiple books. But the Black Quotidian um, is only one book and it uses an entire scalar instance. And so there's gonna be some interesting ways that you would need to set that up for it to flow really seamlessly. And this example does it flawlessly. Um, as you can see, this front page, if you've ever seen scalar before, it doesn't really look like scalar. And that's mm -hmm. because it's not, it's WordPress. And I love when people do this. Meredith actually had an example of this last week in yep. the Omega yep. course, um, where a 
uh, was it Georgetown? I think. I think yes, it was. I think it was Georgetown. The 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 Georgetown slavery right. WordPress as the homepage, and then yeah, Omeka as the interior. I guess yes. So, the WordPress is effectively acting as a portal, which is something we're very much a fan of at Reclaim. <laughs> so, um, WordPress is the entry point here um, to this, and what we're going to talk about a lot today is um, URLs and redirects and how to work with those in Scalar. And what I really like about this is that it's a simple URL that you can go to to access this project. Um, that's just blackquotidian.org. And mm -hmm. if you know that URL, you can plug it in and it will take you to the project. And then we're already starting to see this kind of non-linear, um, non-linear, maybe not non-linear, but this kind of dynamic engagement that the project is already starting to introduce to you, where it uses language like enter, um, it has different uh, buttons that will take you, like move, manipulate Ooh. the content on the pages, yeah. levels, exactly. Um, and so it invites you into the project. And so once you are in, now we're starting to see a more of a traditional scalar wrapper. Um, and then if you look up here at the um, at the browser bar, you'll see the URL gets a little bit messier. Um, but that is the way that the nesting works. And mm -hmm. you can see very easily in like the file manager and the back end of Scalar that that's how things are set up. Um, and it's completely workable when that's not something that the user has to memorize every time they want to come to this site, you know? Yeah. <laughs> just have to know blackquotidian.org and then enter and then they're taken here and they are not probably not even going to look at that uh, URL at that point. SEO friendly. <laughs> it is SEO friendly, exactly. Um, and so this is, the project itself is basically, is can be considered linear, but it also has lots, it utilizes Scalar's signature immersive nested features. So you can start kind of anywhere, but it does give you the opportunity to start at an introduction area. You can see tons of different types of media can be embedded here. Oh, that's really um, neat. Yeah, from PDFs to videos. And then what I like down here at the end of each page, you're able to either continue on in that particular section. Um, and it pr even prompts you to begin with the, the next, the mm -hmm. preceding section, or you can pop out of that content section and continue on to a completely new section. Um, and so it's just a fun way to explore. Mm -hmm. And of course, if that's not someone's cup of tea, there always is the option to go to the table of contents and from here have a more familiar kind of like, okay, I've got an overview, I've got introduction, you know, I can go through the themes and, and that can be more comfortable for people. But what this seem what this project is really great at uh, kind of exhibiting about Scalar is that you can give people choice over how immersed they want to be in the project. Mm -hmm. And I just really love it. It seems like that would also be super useful for sort of cross-referencing is maybe not quite the word that I want, but I'm thinking of if you are looking at a book and you say, ah, oh, man, this is really this, they're discussing, I don't know, wow, can't make up examples off the top of my brain, but you're, you're reading um, some sort of scholarly book article and you say, wow, this is really interesting. Uh, I wonder if this ever comes up again, you go to the mm -hmm. index, um, you say, all right, so that was on page 40, but they also say, okay, there's more stuff on pages 63 and 97 yeah. and from page 110 to 115 or something like that. Whereas for this, you can just say uh, here, here, and here, click these links. It'll take you right where you need to go um, instead of doing all of that back and forth flipping. Yeah, and, and it's kind of a, a path of least resistance, right? Mm -hmm. it, it allows the user to do that exactly the process that you outlined in a way that is um, more seamless and takes fewer, fewer clicks and fewer 
interruptions to their exploration process, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that that is what makes us really powerful is that you don't want to be interrupted when you're you're exploring, you're getting excited, you're coming up with these ideas and seeing these connections. You don't want to just be like, okay, well, let me go over to the index or let me like yeah, yeah, interrupt yeah. this moment. Um, it's, it flows really well that way. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So that is blackquotidian.org. I'm going to put it away for now. Mm -hmm. And um, we're going to go ahead and continue with some of the more technical pieces of setting up Scalar and actually getting in there and using it. And what I'm hoping is that as we do that, you'll be able to think back a little bit to this example and see how they were able to do some of what they did. Cool. So for installing and using Scalar, the reason we are talking about it today is because it has a very simple install Installatron setup. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm on my cPanel right now, and I have already installed it for myself. If you want to go ahead and play around with this on your own, um, I recommend creating a new subdomain for it. And then once you've created that subdomain, so I've done scalar.amandawentworthschmidt.com and then um, installed the application on top of that. And so to install the application, go, you can go to the applications browser and it's actually in our featured applications. And as you can see, this is where WordPress is number one, Omeka is number two, and all the way at the end, we do have Scalar. And it may be at the end, but it's there. Um, it may, it's at the end of the top, but it's still at the top. <laughs> it's also alphabetical, but <laughs> um, it is still at the top. Mm -hmm. So um, you just click in like you would into WordPress or Omeka, any of those commonly used applications. And then you could just install it and go through the whole installation uh, process that you are familiar with. Mm -hmm. um, and when I did it, I just made sure that I put it on HTTPS scalar subdomain. Um, and then something that we can also take from the Omeka lesson we learned is that you will need to make sure that you save your credentials to log in because this is not a one-click login type situation the WordPress. the WordPress is. So save those credentials. Um, and then you'll notice there's actually a, a, an additional fee field here for a registration key, which is something that is unique to Scalar. It is for security purposes. Um, you can actually set that key to something that is personalized for you that is easily memorable because what this will be doing is it's something that you'll share with anyone that you want to register with this for the site um, so that they can actually register. No one can just come across your Scalar site and register for it. That's, you know, we have this set up so that it is automatically required that somebody has a registration key in order to get into your site. Um, which is something that has been implemented in just the past few months as something that really keeps Scalar um, secure. Mm -hmm. uh, so you could put something here like Amanda's class 2023 um, and then just share that with people so it's easily memorable or you can leave it blank, let them generate a randomized key. You'll be able to easily find it once you're in as an admin. So I'm not gonna install this. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel because I already have it. And we'll I'm not go doing down. troubleshooting on the fly this time. No, no, <laughs> <laughs> um, not me. I am way too nervous for that. Um, and I saved those credentials for myself and my password manager. And I'll go ahead and log in. So this is how you will see this page when you're logged in. If you were to go to my Scalar site right now in your browser, um, mm -hmm. you would not see this, <laughs> um, you would just see this kind of scalar page. This book here wouldn't wouldn't be there. Okay. Um, I don't believe. But if you were to um, select view all or search, it should pop up because I have made it public, um, which is something I was doing while I was playing around. And I will talk about that as well, because being a each book is not set as public by default. Okay. The first thing we'll do is go ahead and go into the dashboard and I'll take you through how I set up this first book. So 
when you log into Scalar for the first time, you probably won't see this view. You'll probably see something a little bit different, and that's because there are currently two versions of Scalar available. There's Scalar 1 and Scalar 2. Scalar 1 is the first version, um, and it is still perfectly um, functional but they are also rolling out, the developers have rolled out a second version that is a little prettier in my opinion and um, just a bit cleaner and it has different ways that you can interact with the content. And so I have switched to, to the second version just to see how that, how that is and show all of you if maybe you have Scalar installed and it's only on version one, you can see what it would look like to translate that to version two. Mm -hmm. Is there a, let's not go down this rabbit hole if it's intensive, but is there a particular way that you would to toggle is not really the right word, but like switch from Scalar 1 to Scalar 2? Toggle is the exact right word um, because there is a handy dandy button that allows you to revert the dashboard. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, you nailed it, Pilot. Um, yeah, so that, that you know, they have this, this is Scalar 1, and they have this very enticing banner at the top that says, do you want to try out version 2? And you're like, yeah, I guess so. And it's pretty non-committal because mm -hmm. you can always revert back if you end up okay. not making it. Cool. Yeah. So to create uh, to create a book, so, so for the dashboard in, in version 2, as you can see, it's like way <laughs> more minimalist and simple mm -hmm. looking than this initial one here because in order to move around here you have to um or even interact with a lot of these tabs it's having you select a book to manage mm -hmm. and you have to just kind of do that at the top as opposed to in version two um this you have this kind of sidebar that right now doesn't really look much like a sidebar because i only have one book there but if you had a bunch of books that would be populated down the screen and um, it really reinforces that you have to go into a book in order to start working with a lot of those features. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think that uh, that time that I was sort of investigating Scalar for that faculty member, the dashboard was Scalar 1. And I remember sort of looking through it and going, gosh, there's a lot going on here. How do I sort of figure it out, get started? But this looks very approachable, very friendly. I think so. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, that can be a double-edged sword. Sometimes yeah. you want to see a little bit more detail, a little bit more of like how things work under the hood. Um, mm -hmm. And sometimes people don't prefer an interface that's like this, but um, you know, we'll see. And I'm not an expert in either interface. So if there are things that I'm missing, I hope people will pop it into the chat and we can all learn from each other. Um, but I'm going to just take you through this the way that I figured out how to do it. <laughs> so um, you see that I have my test, uh, test book here already. Um, the role here is going to be your role as the individual who's logged in. And so I'm the author. If I wanted to create a new book, I would obviously go to this create a new book area. And it has a super simple way to get started where you just have to put in the title, subtitle if you'd like, and then um, the genre. But we're yeah. just going to go ahead and go right into my test book. Uh, I was actually going to ask really quick, what are the different types of genres? Um, it's You yeah. don't have to go back. There's a genre drop down right there in the middle. But um, because the drop down menu isn't visible when you're sharing your screen, uh, I couldn't mm -hmm. get a look at what the other types of genres were. Well, how about I go back? Because I don't remember. Um, yeah, so genre. So um, what you're not seeing here is uh, there's book. There's mm -hmm. article and then there's project. Okay, okay. Now, I don't know what the difference is between them. Um, so that's where my knowledge ends, but those are available. So, but we're going to explore book. Okay. So you have, these are where you have these, um, this is where you have these tabs that you're used to seeing in the version one mm -hmm. of, um, of Scalar but now they are presented within the book itself. You have to go into mm -hmm. the book in order to find them. And this is where you would put the properties. So um, what you can, the main thing I wanna point out to you here is that I have this set up so that there's no login required. Um, mm -hmm. So that's why if you go to scalar.amandawentorthschmidt.com, 
you, if you were to search test book or just click that view all button, mm -hmm. it pop up for you. Um, by default, that is not checked so that if a random person came across your Scalar site, they wouldn't be able to see any books at all. It would just look blank to them. And okay. the only way that they'd be able to see the books and access them is if they were to sign in. Okay. So sort of privacy oriented or maybe like development oriented. No one can see what you're doing while you're Until you're ready. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think a lot of people can appreciate that. Mm hmm um, and I, I like the way that you put it. It, 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 it can either be kind of, you can focus on the privacy aspect of it, um, where you have maybe students in a course who don't want their, their work public and you can give mm -hmm. them that option similar to how you can in, in WordPress, but even in WordPress, it's kind of hard, right. To keep things like pretty private yeah. um, because it is such a public based uh, platform and application, but with Scalar, mm -hmm. It's a lot easier to keep things a little bit more DL. And, um, but then also this idea that it's development focused, right? So if like, if you're not necessarily concerned about privacy, but you are concerned about how polished things look, mm -hmm. um, then that's also a great feature to have at your uh, disposal. Cool. Um, and then this is another one that I just checked. I don't really know why I checked it but I did, but you don't have to have it um, indexed in, uh, by search engines. And it's worth noting that even when you check or don't check something like this, it's the internet. So mm -hmm. um, things are never <laughs> truly yeah. fully closed off, if that makes sense. Um, you can't necessarily keep your site yeah. from being indexed in some way, but um, this can certainly help. Mm -hmm. Um, you also have options for if you can, if this book can be duplicated. So that kind of welcomes in a whole kind of creative commons, um, open license mm -hmm. element very easily. Um, and then you can check to have it so that only, um, authors and editors can see past versions if you'd like. Cool. What's also cool. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I had a question. Hmm? No, I was, I was just sort of leaning in to see, I think, Maybe you were headed towards the comment section next? Yes, I was. I was now, this is pretty cool, right? Because mm -hmm. um, this is not a blogging type uh, platform the way that WordPress obviously is. Mm -hmm. um, but it does actually allow for comments on the pages. And again, I think that this just goes towards that dynamicness of Scalar and mm -hmm. invite people in to interact with the content instead of just experience it. Um, so you can have it automatically approve new comments, which again is not the riskiest thing because a lot of that is only for people who have your registration key and can mm -hmm. sign, make an account and sign in, you know. You um, have those privacy controls. Sort you of. do, you have yeah. very upfront privacy controls. So every, anything else is just kind of like extra. So you don't have to feel pressured to have all of these things checked um, or not mm -hmm. checked, but it, it is not automatic that you'll approve new comments. Um, you can email authors when comments are added. And then you can also take advantage of annotation in Scalar. Um, it's built in that hypothesis, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. a lot of folks are familiar with, the open source annotation software that can be added to your browser um, is built into Scalar. So it's very easy to get up. Nice. Yeah. Um, so then, we have some more things down here that I'm not going to go into in, in a lot of detail, but um, things like being able to create a table of contents. I'm not going to get into that today because I don't have a ton of pages that I've created yet. Mm -hmm. um, and you need to have all of your pages created before you make the table of contents because you're essentially plugging those pages in. Okay. And I will let you know about some cool resources on that stuff mm -hmm. uh, at the end of this. So then there's this editorial tab. And I actually have not uh, interacted with this very much, um, but it looks like you're able to enable editorial workflow on the current book um, in each piece of content in your book. I'm going to leave this alone just because of time limitations, but mm -hmm. highly recommend that you check that out. Um, as yeah. for styling, I've already set a thumbnail image for this book. Um, and if you wanted to set a thumbnail image for it, this is where you would go. 
And that's what shows up if you go to the view all thing, that list of. Exactly. Okay, cool. Yep. Um, and then uh, in, under content, this is where you would find your pages. Okay. Actually. Um, and you would also use this area to manipulate media. Mm -hmm. So it truly is content <laughs> and mm -hmm. you don't have to find different tabs for like pages versus, I mean, if we're thinking WordPress pages versus posts versus media, um, it's all going to be in the content tab. Um, so that's kind of nice. And that drop down menu in the top left where it says pages, that's, you would use that to toggle between pages and media, et cetera. Yes. So or, I'll read this to you since you can't see it. It's pages, media files, paths, tags, annotations, comments, lenses, and hidden. Um, so you neat. have a lot of a lot of options on the, mm -hmm. in that drop down. And that goes back to the scalar being flexible about how you can organize and manage lots of different options for that sort of management. Yeah, thing. Mm -hmm. fully, fully. Um, so the, the main thing that I want to, the next section I would like to mm -hmm. uh, approach here is creating, so adding and assigning users. Mm -hmm. Users are a huge part of Scalar. Um, again, it's something that um, makes this a very collaborative space. Um, it makes it easy for people to come in and, and, and work with you on your book. And um, so in order to do that, you have to have users. And we've already talked a bit about um, some of the extra guardrails that Scalar puts in place to make sure that users are added securely. Mm -hmm. and they're not gonna be dealing with uh, a bunch of spammers or anyone like that because uh, things are pretty pretty secure and mm -hmm. they've done it in a pretty elegant way in my opinion. So as yeah. you can see, I have two users here right now. This is Man. the me. This is mm -hmm. the punishment mm -hmm. <laughs> that is talking to you at this moment. And um, you can see here that my role is author and um, I am listed. So that means that I would be um, visible in the index for the book. Okay. So you actually have the option to not be listed, which um, is interesting um, and expands the way that you can collaborate. The other person I have added is the me that's not me. So this is Amanda Reclaim. Your um, secret identity. My alter ego. Um, and I've added Amanda Reclaim as an author. I don't have her listed. And um, it's a secret. <laughs> it's a secret. And in order to add Amanda, I had to give her um, the registration key, which... I was able to do, I, when I did this, I did it in version one. So I'm gonna see quickly, I am troubleshooting on the fly, how to do it in version two. Can't avoid it. Can't avoid it. But this is what our viewers come for. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. Okay, okay. So, uh, if you go in version two and you go to utilities and you mm -hmm. go down to manage users. I don't know why all of this part is red. It kind of scares me. It makes um, it look like they're all broken links for some reason. Yeah, um, or that you're doing something really scary when you go to them. Um, <laughs> but go to manage users, and then you can see the users that are already here. You're able to do things like deactivate them from here, set passwords from here, um, and you can most importantly show your registration key. So because I didn't put a, a easily memorable key mm -hmm. in, um, You'll see my key right here. Everyone can look at it. Uh, this is going to go away. So, <laughs> um, but I would take this. I would oh, try to copy just the key. There you go. There you go. Yeah, yeah. So that might take a little bit of uh, finesse. Exactly. And so you copy that and then you just share that. Um, so that is kind of like an extra manual step, right? You're, you're going to have to communicate with your users ahead of time. So that's what makes it great for if you're working with a class um, or very close collaborators that you have easy communication with. Mm -hmm. But um, definitely can be a barrier if you're kind of generally inviting a group of people to um, mm -hmm. join your Scalar book, you would have to make sure that you um, also provide them with that that key up front. Cool. And so what that would do 
is, let's say, Amanda Reclaim went to, went here. I'm gonna sign out, it's probably gonna mess everything up, but that's okay. Um, and then I wanted to, as Amanda Reclaim, register. This is what they would look like. You'd have mm -hmm. email, full name, and then that registration key that was shared with me. Um, then you'd set your password here. Um, and it has this terms of service, which is the general Scalar terms of service that you can find um, at scalar.usc.edu slash terms of service. And then you'd be able to register. Cool. Hopefully that didn't mess up this tab. Um, if we continue to move around, but we can always log back in. So, yeah. Um, nope. <laughs> there it is. Okay. We're back. Mm -hmm. So, um, yes. So you can add, I think the way, the, the main difference here is, right, in Scalar 1, you had to add the user generally. And then after you added them, you would then assign them to a book. But the mm -hmm. way that Scalar 2 is operating right now is that you would be inside of the book and that's the only way that you can add a user because okay. that's not an option if I go back to like the general dashboard. It mm -hmm. really is just the dashboard for my profile. Okay. Um, and in Scalar 1, you were able to look at all users across all books. Okay. Um, and this might be something that you can do in Scalar 2 as well. And, and folks who are attending might know that. So if that's the case, let us know. <laughs> but from what I'm seeing, um, you're only able to add users to specific books in Scalar 2. In that case, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Maybe we don't have the answer to that right now, and it's fine. But um, if you want someone to be able to have multiple books accessible to them when they log in, um, it looks it looked like in Scalar 1, you could say, here's all the users and this particular user is attached to X, Y, and Z books. Mm -hmm. Whereas this, if you're making the user inside the book, when you, if you were to add them to another book, oh, manage users, I just, I just saw it. Or something, yes. manage users, manage books. Okay, okay. So it does look like this utilities tab will allow you to control things kind of across the um, Scalar gotcha. site uh, beyond just the book. Okay, um, that's super useful. Mm -hmm. Good to know. Yes. So, um, so we've got users taken care of. Um, it's worth noting that uh, Scalar does have options for role. Um, so it's not just author that's an option. You can also have commentator. This is somebody who can edit existing pages, can create pages, which will be flagged as commentaries to end users. So it's not gonna show up mm -hmm. as like, this was created by the author. It, it'll show users like this is created as a commentary page. Um, and then they have no other editing privileges. You can have a reviewer. So that's someone who can edit existing pages, mm -hmm. but then they have no other editing privileges. They can't create anything. Okay, okay. And then you finally have a reader, and that's someone who can add signed comments to public pages, no other privileges. Um, mm -hmm. And so that those are the people who you would be managing with that check mark for um, adding, allowing comments to come through okay. without approval. They'd be readers. Cool. Great. So that's the user mm -hmm. section of this. The next thing... I wanted to get into a little bit and explore is um, the idea of importing media. So um, in order to insert media, from what I can tell, if you want to upload a file that you have on your computer, you need to do that ahead of time so that you have a bank to pull from. This is a familiar concept to us when we think about WordPress or we think about Omeka. Although with those platforms, while you're editing, it's relatively easy to um, upload that media on the fly. With okay. Scalar, you have to do a little bit of planning ahead. You have to think, I know I'm going to need this picture, so I need to add it um, on this content page mm -hmm. rather than just going into a page and then trying to upload it there because it doesn't really have that option from what I can tell. <laughs> if I'm wrong, please tell me. <laughs> I would know. Um, 
<laughs> I'm speaking to the audience, yes, of course. Right there. <laughs> so, um, so you would go to the book that you want your media to live. You would go to this import media section. And again, I apologize that my drop down is not working, but you will see um, a lot of options actually for this. Mm -hmm. We have affiliated archives, um, such as Critical Commons or the Internet Archive. They have other archives that include the Metropolitan Museum of Art or Omeka sites or YouTube or SoundCloud. Um, uh, but then they also have the very basic option of files or URLs. So you can upload an internet URL so that you mm -hmm. have that linked, or you can upload a file. And so as you can see, this changed to upload a file, and then it redirects me to um, this media file page. And so you have kind of a form to fill out every time that you add something. Mm -hmm. But um, what is nice is that you can add metadata here. You can mark if it's triple IF manifest um, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. So you would just put in a title, you put in a description if you'd like. I don't really know how this works in terms of alt text. So that would be something to look into. I haven't, mm -hmm. I haven't had the time to figure out if, description would is maybe the same it, alt text or if it would translate into it or, or something like that maybe additional metadata or something I'm not yeah additional metadata uh, no that oh. is uh dublin core standard i think okay. um and so so you would fill that in and then um you know you choose your file at the end and then you would upload it and mm -hmm. then so let's say i did that and then I'm going to go right now. We are on the upload page. And if I click on this edit current content, it's not going to like it because I can't edit this page. So I'll go back to the dashboard, which you do with that wrench. Um, and then I'll go back to content. And so let's say I added content and I wanted to create a home page, like a um, cover page for my book. Mm -hmm. And I already picked out what image I want to use. I would then create a page. So this, this is the end result. This is me taking this out of the oven for you mm -hmm. uh, ahead of time. But so this is what if you were to go into my book on scalar.amandawentworthschmidt.com and you click view all and you go into the test book, this is what you would see. This is the cover. But let's say I want to, let's say I'm just setting up this page. You do have to create a page for your cover. Um, you give it a title. So that would be um, the title of your book and um, a description. And mm -hmm. then from here, you would kind of leave this alone for your cover because you're not really looking to add content like that. But you would come down to this bottom area. And this is where you would... Um, set up something called a book splash cover in the layout option. So you have, again, a drop down comes up and it has a lot of things on it. Um, but under the first, there's going to be a top section that will say general. And then mm -hmm. under there, you'll have basic image header splash book splash virtual path for your options. If you select book splash, it tells you what that is, shows a full screen cover for your book. Okay. Um, so you would select that. And then you would go to styling and then you would select this uh, drop down, which I'm assuming you can't see. Actually, that one I can see. I think it's I don't know why it's different. That one I that one's visible, though. I think um, it's because this one is in like built into the interface, whereas like this. Is, that's a system drop down somehow. The system. Yeah. OK. So, system drop down. so um, you would go to key image um, and then from here you would select your image. So I have a couple different images that I have uploaded already to my media bank. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to select cover image. And that's this um, little Reclaim Ed Tech Scaler icon that we have. And then you would save it and you'd be able to save and view. And hmm. that's what you would get. Cool. Yes. All right. So it's very stylish. I think it's stylish. I think it looks very slick. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, if you think back to our example, blackquotidian.org, mm -hmm. they did not have that for their, their homepage. They had the WordPress 
portal. And then when they got to their homepage for the book, it actually had a whole graph layout. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can do that as well. Um, I don't know exactly how. So um, again, I just want to reiterate here that you can select this no login required permission for anyone to see the book. You're going to need this selected if you want to actually share the link to your book mm -hmm. to anyone. Um, yeah. or they would have to sign in and have an account in order to view it. Okay. Um, yes. So. All right. But it looked like that was selected by default rather than. Nope. I had selected it myself. By default, oh. it is unchecked. Um, I had just already had that all set up. So all of, I think all of those are unchecked by default so that you have full decision making over what you want to do. Okay. Again, so it's sort of, again, that privacy minded, dev minded, you can get started without anybody being able to peek behind the curtain while you're still getting ready. Precisely. Which is a, a wonderful comfort to most. Yeah. So the last thing that I want to talk about um, in any, uh, detail mm -hmm. to share my screen again, um, is this idea of handling redirects. I kind of made a big deal about this, um, the black um, quotidian, black quotidian, because yeah. I thought it was so nice that they had it like that. Um, but that's not, you know, by default, it, you kind of get a messy URL in mm -hmm. my, with this stuff. So um, what I'm going to show you how to do is how to set the, this, this is if you're working with one book. So if my scalar instance, I just had my test book was the only book that I was interested in even adding um, to that instance. Mm -hmm. um, it wouldn't really make a lot of sense for my homepage to have this like grid set up, this like library set up, right? Yeah. Instead, it might yeah, like a catalog. I was that yeah. was something that I was again, you know, I keep saying way back when I was experimenting with Scalar, I was like, why did they do that? You're only making one book. Why would you why would they make you do catalog? Of course, library, of course. Right. And that's kind of by default how it's set mm -hmm. up is to create this catalog for you. But if um, you only have the one book, mm -hmm. then then we can do it this way. Okay, um, okay. sure. So I am not going to show you exactly how Black Quotidian did this, but essentially what they did was created a WordPress page and then linked it to their Scalar instance. Mm -hmm. Pretty simple. We'd be happy to walk anyone through it um, <laughs> if they were interested in it. But what I'm going to show you how to do is set the Scalar homepage to the, what we'll call the primary book. So we'll consider my test book the primary book. Okay. This will give us a cleaner URL. And essentially, we're going to do two things. We're going to go into cPanel and create a redirect. And then we're going to go into the file manager and manipulate the HT access rule that that redirect puts in place. Nice. Yeah. So back in cPanel, I'm going to go to my main dashboard. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to go to redirects under the domain section. Mm -hmm. And the way that you would do this here, and again, I've already... Have I made this? I, ha I don't think I have made this redirect actually. So we'll do mm -hmm. it live time. Cause I was like, I'll save this for the demo. Yeah. So what you would do is under this HTTPS question mark, question mark, cause it gives you all the options. Mm -hmm. You would drop down and then you would select the um, page that you would like people to input into the browser mm -hmm. in order to get to redirects can be confusing. Yeah. <laughs> people to get to the page that you want them to get to. So I want people to just put in scalar.amandawentworthschmidt.com. Mm -hmm. And then I want that to automatically redirect to um, this is a, still a very unwieldy. I want that to redirect textbook, to textbook, textbook index. slash index. Okay. So, yeah, that is a little clunky isn't it? All right. And so I'm just going to go ahead and redirect without, with or without www dot and add. And I think I did that right. Yeah. But you're not putting the wildcard redirect because the, the, the wildcard redirect is saying if it's dot com slash 
ooh, look at me, it'll send it to test book slash index slash ooh, look at me. Exactly. But in theory, that'll never happen because what we're trying to set up is to make the URL super clean. People won't ever get, it won't matter in, in the end. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. But that's definitely, thank you for pointing that out. Yeah, we, mm -hmm. we, in this case, we can just ignore that wildcard um, mm -hmm. feature. So so now you see I've got this um, domain set up. This is the one that everyone's going to be working with. That's mm -hmm. all you have to remember. This is the one you're going to share with people. It's cleaner. It's still very un unwieldy. I don't personally love my domain name <laughs> at this point, but it's what I have, and I'm too lazy to change it. Um, and... This is the one that people won't be dealing with, but where it's actually going to be going. Okay. Cool. So because we did that, um, cPanel did its magic on the back end, and now we're going to go in and tweak it just a little bit so that Scalar understands what we're trying to get it to do. Okay. So we would go into the file manager, and then you would go into the folder that has your Scalar instance, mm -hmm. and then you would go to HT Access. And again, just a quick review, if you're not seeing your dot files, you can add that by going to settings, uh, this preferences box mm -hmm. will open and you will make, be sure to show hidden files. Got it. So with HT access, you would go in and edit it. And you'll see all the way at the bottom here. Um, um, yeah. cPanel has, has placed that right at the bottom of this mm -hmm. file. Um, so it's great, we have it there, but this actually isn't going to help us because Scalar is going to be reading all of the default stuff before this. Oh, okay. And so it, it won't actually work. What we'll need to do is put it all the way at the top and save it mm -hmm. so that as Scalar is loading, as your site is loading over this new redirect, it knows to Send, send you right there, mm -hmm. um, as opposed to going with the default. Yeah. So now, if we do take this out, boop, we're there. And as you can see, it does populate the rest of this with, you know, the rest, uh, that's still a URL, but I don't have to remember that whole thing as a user. I can just, yeah. you know, do that base. Keep it nice and clean. Clean and fresh. Yeah. I like that. Right. Any questions, if anything that you think I need to clarify about handling redirects? Mm, I'm wondering how someone would, they, they'd have to bookmark the direct admin link. They'd have to bookmark uh, .com slash admin or system or whatever that extension is. To log in, you mean? Yeah, in order to log in and get into the back end and do editing. That's, that's a great point because on the normal screen, you would have that login option. Mm -hmm. So yes, if you wanted people, if you wanted that to be your finished product redirect at the end, mm -hmm. um, but you still wanted the, the creators to log in, you would want to make sure that they had um, this saved. Okay. And it will take them here and then they'll sign in like normal. Cool. Great point. Whew. Okay. So um, we are coming up, up on the end here. Um, mm -hmm. And the last thing I want to ask the audience in the ether is to tell us what scalar sites do you love? Uh, throw it in the Discord channel. Um, mm -hmm. We know that they're out there. Um, we don't get to see them a ton. And so we'd really love, you know, we'd just love to see what people are working on, if it's something that you're working on or uh person you're, you're working with and supporting is working on, or even just scalar sites that you've seen across the web mm -hmm. that you think are particularly impressive, drop it in Discord. Tell us a little bit about why you love it. Um, and then we can have a nice chat about it. Show and tell. Sharing sharing is caring. Share. Share these time. <laughs> Share these time. <laughs> um, and then finally, I just wanted to take a, a minute to point out these resources that we have on Scalar. Mm -hmm. um, we have our own knowledge base on Scalar, which is pretty, um, pretty cPanel focused, pretty uh, you know hosting focused as we mm -hmm. are. Um, but then if you look into this, this second section I've included here, these three resources 
helped me understand scalars so much um, mm -hmm. and I recommend them to everybody. Um, what I'll point out first, <laughs> this one was one I was particularly excited about, but I will point out the scalar user guide, the official scalar user guide from the University of South Carolina. Um, yeah, that's it, the one that I yep. link every time someone says, oh, does Scalar have documentation? I go, University of South Carolina does. <laughs> this is the official documentation. Okay. Um, so that is great. And it has it for both Scalar 1 and Scalar 2. Oh, nice. But what I really enjoyed as well mm -hmm. as the excellent knowledge base that um, USC has is um, the Digital Publishing Workshop website. Um, okay. And they have a whole section on learning scalar, lots of really useful tips um, that are focused on what the community has noticed. Um, and then finally, for those of the video watching mm -hmm. uh, preference, the Digital Humanities Initiative, um, they have a YouTube channel that I have linked directly here with the scalar query. They have a whole series on scalar. I think they have 11 videos on scalar. Um, mm -hmm. and that was also a game changer for me. So highly recommend that. It's a great resource. Um, we are going, I'll, I'll go ahead and share, um, in discord. I'm sure by now I'll have shared the, um, the link to the slides, mm -hmm. uh, which are right on our reclaimed.tech, um, website. It's reclaimed.tech slash scalar dash application. Um, and you'll see all of these slides. You'll be able to click on those links and um, and revisit all of this as yeah. well as the... Um, and I'm sure the, it'll be in yeah. the blog post for the week as well. It sure will. Yes. All right. So that's Taylor, folks. Um, that was a lot to cover and we covered it in an hour. So um, we appreciate you, you sticking with us and joining us um, and can't wait to hear your, about your experience and the, all the stuff you know about it that we don't know. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, thanks this for joining been me. Amazing. Thank you so much, Amanda. Thank you, Pilot, for joining me. It was, it was, I had a lot of fun. Yeah. So we will see you next week for um, Ural, Urals. Mm -hmm. um, there was, I, I think, some debate in the chat of Ural, URL. There will be a debate Ural. in the chat for all of these going forward <laughs> about how to pronounce them. So, all right. Looking forward to it and see you then. Bye. See you then. Bye.